It's happening. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. Like the happening. What was that again? Oh, the plants are mad at the people and they're having their revenge. That's some bullshit right there. What, on our, on the plants behalf? Yeah. Yeah. You don't think they have right the right to be no. mad? <laughs> you don't you don't think the plants have a right to be mad at us? No. No. They can't even move from where they are. They're stuck where they live. Right. We're clearly superior. <laughs> Cuz we can walk. So because to we're other superior they should move shouldn't. around to other places. We can do whatever we want to them. Yeah. Do you think plants wish they could move? <laughs> I don't know. Guys, we did not take drugs. No. Not yet. Today is April. 420 is coming up. Although I just <laughs> I did just pour weekend water. Yes, I got my I. weekend water. Hi, welcome to Stay F. Tompkins. I'm Paul F. Tompkins. I'm Janie Haddad Tompkins. I'm a comedian. I'm an actress. We are a married couple living in Los Angeles, California, and we do a podcast that started during the global pandemic. The global pandemic hasn't ended yet. Therefore, True. our podcast hasn't ended yet. Right. Here's what happens. We sit down on our date night, Friday night. We have a spontaneous, unhinged. <laughs> Isn't it funny how there was nothing going on, but we still just had one date night? <laughs> <laughs> We've been married for almost 11 years. <laughs> Our anniversary is this month. Uh, yeah. Guess what? Our 10 year anniversary last year, we spent. Doing a podcast. Mm -hmm. That was our big 10 year. Our big fucking. <laughs> <laughs> that was our big fucking 10 year big deal anniversary. The 10 year is the podcast anniversary. That's right. It is now. Well, these things change over time. They go from, <laughs> like at one point it was copper. No one has any use for copper anymore in their daily lives. So we don't do that anymore. Mm -mm, no. You can still do it, but then they add a thing like big screen TV. <laughs> <laughs> is there a big screen TV anniversary? No, I bet I bet one of them is electronics though. I bet it's like China or electronics. A new iPhone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the anniversary where you upgrade your smartphone <laughs> for your spouse. Yeah. You could either get them something made out of leather or a charging hub. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by Big Charging Hub. <laughs> Please, Big Charging Hub. We would love Listen, big for you to sponsor hub. us. Big Charging Hub, your lobby is too powerful. <laughs> you need to back off the policy making. Big Charging Hub, get out of my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> we really took a turn on them. Anyways, we're fucking exhausted as usual. Yeah, I... I Probably well, three hours. I didn't say anything. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. And then I changed my, I was going to back it up a little bit. Back it up. Back it up. We had Janie's mom visiting back for a couple up. weeks, which thinking. was really nice. My fully vaccinated, fully vaccinated mom mama. who spent the pandemic alone. Yes. In the Charleston area. Came over on the. There's now direct flight from Charleston to Los Angeles, oh, which God. is so wonderful. Uh, makes me so happy. So wonderful. And oh, so, guess what, though? What? Apparently, we're supposed to boycott JetBlue. By the way, enough with the boycotting, because, y'all, I can't keep up. Why okay? are we supposed to boycott JetBlue now? I guess they gave money to something. <laughs> to something... I'm going to need a little more to go on than that if I can start this boycott. I'm not, I'll tell you this much. I don't care if they gave money to Satan himself. I am not taking another connecting flight <laughs> to Charleston. You know what, though? I got to say, if they gave money to Satan himself, I'm going to question that. What does he need with money? Well, 
I'm going to look into it. I'd be saying, you know what I would say? I'd say he must be doing something right in order <laughs> to have a direct. I mean, right. the evangelicals are going to come after us like they did Little Nas X. They did who? Little Nas oh, X. Little Nas X. Little Nas X. All right, finish your story. I totally derailed. So we had a we had a lovely time. It's not really a story. I'm just catching people. Well, up. yeah. So my mom, my fully vaccinated mom, came out. I took her to do outdoor things. We are partially vaccinated. High five. Mm-hmm. High five. Pfizer. High P- Pfizer. P- P- oh, high <laughs> Pfizer. And, um, but we're not fully vaccinated. Make vac- my Pfizer, the P-Fies. Because we're not fully vaccinated yet, we still had to practice our caution. Like yes. we couldn't go indoors. Normally and- we open mouth kiss with Janie's mom. Oh, we're a very affectionate family. So <laughs> um, but it was... Even just when, like, the days when we were just hanging out here. Yeah. It was so nice to have somebody else in the house. Other than each other. To be honest, listen, I love yeah. you. You're my favorite person. Honey, you don't have to explain it to me. I know exactly what you mean. Have you ever heard this? And um, you know exactly what I mean. This this saying, it's it's a really, it's a really good saying. It's um, variety is the spice of life. Mm. Have you heard that one? No, but you know what? learning this new thing. Yeah. It's made my life more interesting somehow. Okay. Yeah. Well, there was some variety. <laughs> and yeah. it spiced things up. It really did. It was nice. It yeah. was really nice. We watched movies together and... Oh, geez, I'm so sorry I'm yawning. And then she, she left the other day, yesterday. Was that yesterday? Yes, and so many people were like, oh, I can't believe you're gonna, not going to have your mom on the podcast. And, like, here's the deal. We tried. My my mom is what you would call an introvert. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's not one of those moms. You know what I mean? That's like, <laughs> let me talk to everybody. She's you know? not an Instagram mom. She's not a TikTok mom. No, she's she's like, oh, no, you know, I don't want to. No, no. Yeah. And, and And to be fair, like, I don't particularly want to expose my mom to show business the wild <laughs> that is not her choice that was not her path yes yes um even like she's like kind of a lurker on twitter and it still makes me nervous cuz i was like you got to be careful on twitter like you can't engage with I don't certain think people she ever twitter. engages with anybody i think she just reads stuff yeah but every now and then uh, i mean she might be like oh then one time she was like so and so retweeted me and i was like no they didn't <laughs> I had to look. I was like, "What did she? What did I think happen?" Because she liked their tweet. I don't know. Whatever. It, <laughs> I, I I don't know. My <laughs> mom is not someone who is out there. She doesn't put herself out there. Yeah. Does that make sense? That's why I was like, "No." I mean, what am I supposed to bring her on the? Po- I mean, she would have said hi if we made her. If we made, yeah, her. we wouldn't want to make her. I mean, she shut it down immediately. She was like, "No." She's like, I'm good. <laughs> it was a flat I no. I had to turn yeah. on her front line or whatever, and <laughs> it was fine. So, no. So then my mom yesterday. left. Yeah, then we had a full day yesterday. I did <laughs> I did do a self-tape audition that made me feel bad about myself. <laughs> but you know what the problem is? Is that a regular audition, you go in and you do it. You're not looking at yourself. You know what I mean? How you don't about, have to look at the I will audition. Say that, I, I'm not going to say what the audition is because I don't know if you're allowed Probably not. Um, however, I will, what, I'm, I'm going to talk about the audition just for one second. Uh, by the way, it was not like a new Star Wars movie. It was not anything no, like that. It's just that you just never know if they're, if someone would be like, you're not allowed to talk about this character we're about to yeah, introduce yeah, yeah. in this, whatever. Um, the audition was challenging because, first of all, you got the information that you had to submit the audition like, in less than 24, like you had less than 24 hour turnaround. I would say you had a 24 hour, 24 turnaround. hour turnaround. Yeah. yeah. It was like by end of day tomorrow. The second part element of the audition that became challenging was that it was eight pages <laughs> yeah. of material. Yeah. Okay. And then the third element that they challenged you with, with this particular audition, which is different than other types of material. This is what we say at audition Passover. Why is this? Why is this audition different than other types of material? <laughs> so, 
<laughs> and so, oh, Audition Passover might be the title of this episode. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so then, so then, uh, so then they said this material that you have l- little less than, well, you have 12 hours to work on it, right? Cause you're not going to stay up all night working on this. Yeah. You're going to sleep. Yeah. Right. Um, has to be word perfect. There can be no ad libbing, no improvising. This is just how this particular thing is done. So what people <laughs> what people need to know if they're not familiar with this term is you have to deliver the lines exactly as written. You cannot add words, you cannot subtract words, you cannot substitute words. Because I worked on I worked on a TV show that I did not realize until I got the job. I did a few episodes of it that the the creator insisted on word perfect to the point where if you said um, jump instead of leap, someone would the, the script supervisor the, would come over and say redo the take. Yeah, they have to redo it. Um, I mean, it's not like they would say we have to do it again because of Paul. Like the the script supervisor would come over knew. to everybody <laughs> in the in the cast. And tell them the mistakes that they made. And it was such a relief when I found out from the regular cast that this is how it's always been. And they've been dealing with this. And it was like, okay, so it's not just me. And, and it's a it's a burden shared, yeah. which made it a burden lesson. But it was still, it was, it was extremely difficult because sometimes what happens is a script will get to the finished process with... You know, some words slight, like a sentence with a slight clunk in it. Like this word would is not quite appropriate, or it's not quite in the right place, or whatever. You still, if you say it out loud, you still know what you mean. But if you know that, oh, grammatically this is not correct, or you know that uh, this is not quite the right word Mm -hmm. for this, it bumps in your mind and it makes it. It actually makes it harder to memorize because. A lot of times you're reading dialogue and your mind corrects things as it goes because mm-hmm. you're absorbing it, you know. Well, and not not only that, I mean like if a word perfect I think is is fine. I think that's fine. That's an okay. It's to it's ask. valid. It's a yeah, exactly. But it's a preference. Uh, like if you're not on this show where you're given the scripts every day to mm-hmm. memorize that day, your muscle for memorization is not really like to have only one day to prepare eight pages of word perfect material. It has to be word perfect, and it has huge... to have a it has to have a certain pace. It has to be like it's, it was it's like a, a the scene was a very quick back and rat-a-tat-tat. forth, yeah, broken up by occasional big blocks Beats. of dialogue. Yeah. Um, but okay. most of it was like did it 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 did it, and then there might have been like a long beat of yes. silence, yeah, 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 which which I get because they're saying like did it did it long beat of silence because it's a rhythm. They want to, they want to highlight that particular dramatic moment or whatever. Yeah. Or whatever moment. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. So, so you were having a a hard, uh, time. I was frustrated. Time with it. I don't, cause I was not getting it. It was like, I had to make myself realize it's not, I'm not supposed to nail it in one take. I'm not supposed to, of course not. Well, there's no know. way to. Yeah. And I had to I don't care say, if like, you're like, this is just going to be trial and error. It's going to be yeah. doing it a bunch and, and getting it down, you know. But I do get frustrated by things like that. And I also, it, going into it, I was like, they're, you know, they're looking for someone that's literally 20 years younger than me. I don't know about that. <laughs> it's in the breakdown. It says 30. I don't think the breakdown, I don't believe, like, breakdowns like that for me, mm. I ignore. Well, I mean, if it's, at the, if it's at the point where they're asking me to audition yes. for it, then they know, they must know who I am. They but want I, to see. But it always makes me think, like, did somebody see an old picture of me and they think that's what I look like well, now? That's not how <laughs> casting works, I don't think. I mean, honestly, it's not. Like, there's no way that, uh, you know. And also, there was no, the the, the role had no age sp- specificity to its no, it did. ability. No, no, not to its ability, but there was an age specification in the breakdown. I I know, but I'm saying the role itself is, is could feasibly be any age or gender. Yes, or there was no there was no dialogue like I I got out of college ten years ago. Or no, whatever. Yeah, yeah, like like 
here's my ID, sir. God. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like that. I hope I don't get drafted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it literally was like, in yeah. you know. But I, but it, it messed me up. I had a, I had a, I also had an audition for the last audition I had. It kind of felt the same way. Where it was like, it sucks to go into a thing and think, oh, I'm not, I'm not right for this. So I guess what I'll do is what I did with the last one that I had that I was not right for, where they were clearly looking for a much younger person. I was like, I will just do what I do. I'll bring my own yeah. flavor to it. And I don't think I did that yesterday. And I think that bothered me. I don't me. think you were allowed to do that yesterday, given the circumstances of the technical parameters of the well, situation. I, I, If that makes sense. It does. But I, th- I think I still could have... I think if I thought about it, rather than thinking, oh, their their thing is very specific. I have to do their thing. Mm-hmm. I think I still could have done... I could have met the expectations that were set out for me. Like Mm -hmm. you must follow these guidelines Mm -hmm. and still brought rather than trying to act like someone who was already on that show, Mm -hmm. I could have brought my own flavor. to. I agree to that. I agree only on one. And and I have one objection to that, which is with a 24 hour turnaround. I think that's a very hard, that's a high ask. I know because you haven't, you didn't get a chance to live with that material in order to throw it away. Yeah, in any but, way. but you know what? If I had if I had looked at that stuff even the night before, just so I knew what I was in store for, a little osmosis. Yeah, who knows? But anyway, so I was like, I was kind of beat down yesterday. Yeah, that was a long. That was a long. That was a long process. Yeah, yeah. Um, that and, was and tough. the thing that sucks about self tapes is that then you have to send them in, then you have to look at yourself, you have to look at your performance, you have to edit it, you have to edit it put it all but together. Like, I know you're like, was three scenes you're that always I did like, I need stuff I'm not right for, but then I don't know if you remember at the beginning of the pandemic when I read for the Latinx maid, <laughs> yeah, and I was like, why am I reading for this? Like, the name wasn't even, yeah, you know, and I was yeah, like. Yeah. I, and I wanted to be on the hey show. Hey, y'all, it's me, Mrs. Esposito. <laughs> I mean, I didn't do it. Like, <laughs> I just it was myself because I'm like, well, they obviously might change this role. Madre de Dios. I was just. <laughs> it was like a funny made part in this comedy. I really kind of wanted to work on the show. That it, sure. And yeah. I got to read for it another time. Other parts. For a different characters. Remember, I yeah. did the drunk. And then I wasn't right for that either. Remember the drunk mayor? Of Las Vegas? Yes, that was good, though. And I, I got all cougary for it. But I was like, <laughs> I mean, I kind of, I feel like I could play this part, but it would require, like, a wig and some tips, some nail tips, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, someone's going to already have that going for them, I think. Yeah. They're going to have, like, frosted hair yeah, and I stuff. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is, what's weird is you get these, you get these auditions and you think, oh, I know who would be perfect for this, not me. <laughs> Yeah. I can see the person who should be doing yeah, it. Yeah, like <laughs> Stephanie Weir or something. You yeah. know, like I would yeah, be yeah, yeah. I, but yeah, but um but I still just like go for it because I'm like, well, maybe there's gonna be another part on this series down the road. I know. That's I the way love to think. the director, the creator of this that's thing that's coming to think. out with it's like a new show with yes. like Gene Smart. I can't yeah, wait to yeah. see it. Like I read the pilot. I'm like, this is really fucking funny. Yeah. And I wanna be a part of it, but I didn't get to be a part of it, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like I, I mean, I, I, I get stuff I read for all the time. I'm like, there's no way in hell. There's no way in hell. Speaking of Gene Smart, do you remember we saw that trailer for that movie? It's like a romantic comedy with her and William Shatner. (gasps) I want to see it. I did see it. You do want to see it? Yes. And it takes place in Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think I added Christopher Lloyd's in it. Oh, I want to see it. I actually, I was like, I'm, I would be down when we watched the trailer because my mom was here and I was mm. like, I would totally watch that. And y'all were not as into it as I was. I was just very surprised. Like you don't see William Shatner in a lot of contemporary things these days that are not, you know, commercials. <laughs> and it's like, it's at the point where you're like, does he not want to do stuff anymore? Like he did that sitcom. Maybe he lives in Palm Springs. Cause Maybe. it was in the, sh- the movie took place in Palm Springs and that, right. and, and they were like, Maybe they were like, what, were, this shoots in Palm Springs. And he was like, sure. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know. I don't know. I want to see that movie, though. I All do right. want to see it. We can watch it. We can watch okay. it. I'm certainly intrigued by it. 
And I do love Jean Smart. I think she's great. No, Jean Smart is amazing. I mean, she's amazing. I'm very excited about her new series when it comes out. Uh, so then today, today woke up, <laughs> felt a lot of energy, and was doing things. I was like, I'm going to go on a hike today. Also, by the way, we have been talking for like, I want to say like two weeks now about how we're finally going to tackle our health. Mm-hmm. And we're still just not ready. No, but we, I know, but it's that. I think the, the process in, includes a two week discussion before it starts. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've been in this weird stasis for so long and, you know, it was, you know, it just went through stages. I'm sure a lot of people have their own version of this where, where. Like, first it seemed like, oh, this isn't going to be that long. Then it seemed like, oh, man, it is going to be long, and I have no idea when it's going to end. Yeah. Then it seemed like there was an end in sight, you know, when the vaccination came or the vaccine came. Yeah. And then it sort of felt like. But that's not a fast. Even though the vaccine came and there there was so much hope when they announced the successful vaccinations in November, like, everyone knew it was not going to be, like. No, Instant. but but there was a there was a feeling of okay, there is now a timeline on when I can do things. I can do certain things that I haven't been able to do for a year. Another thing about when the vaccine when the successful vaccine news came out in November, uh, and it was like okay, doing the math, it's like we'll probably get it in the spring. That mm. seemed like so like the spring <laughs> was like. That doesn't exist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the spring, like I couldn't think, pa- I couldn't even figure out the holidays. Like we were still like, maybe we can fly back east for the holidays. And then we're like, what the fuck oh, are yeah, we yeah, thinking? Yeah. That yeah. was like the most like naive thought. Cause were I was like, it could be so se- seasonal and like go away or something. I don't know <laughs> what we thought. This but. could magically disappear. Um, so the, there is like, so we are talking about that. And so I woke up with a lot of energy today and then I got caught up. This happens a lot. And what's, we're, what we're living in right now in the house is there's a lot of uh, three quarters done chores that were around the house today of like laundry to put away, things to fold. Um, uh, uh, there was like straightening up in my office from the like, – like I have to take the shit down from that audition that I did mm-hmm. and pack it all away. And so it was like everywhere I went, it was like, oh, I got to do that. I got to do that. Got to do that. Dishes to wash, you know, whatever. And then I got caught up in in doing all that stuff and then it got to be like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. And you were not going to do your hike. And then I was just done. I was like out of steam. It just happened. Like all of a sudden I got really tired. And I laid down on the bed. I was like, I just want to stretch out. I'm not like necessarily going to take a nap. And then I fell asleep for three hours. For three hours. <laughs> I was like, I was like doing all this stuff. I had to, I had a breakfast meeting with my friend, Catherine, who I hadn't seen in like a month and like had to see her. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we can't like text. Like we have to like download, you know? Mm-hmm. And so we had like an outdoor breakfast. And then I had this Zoom. I had like a two hour Zoom with my family in West Virginia, my brother in Philly. And then I had uh, like a like a 90 minute phone call with my cousin, my baby cousin who might mm-hmm. move out here because I'm like, OK. How old is this baby cousin? 27. <laughs> <laughs> and then my neighbor was like, I have this uh, magazine to give you. I'm coming by. So then we sat out on the lawn. And I was like, no way, Paul is still sleeping. He's going to come out and see me with my neighbor and her dogs. He never came out. And I came in the house and I was like, I think he's been asleep for three hours. I don't, it's like six o'clock. It's time for dinner. So (laughs) so I go in there and he was in the same position that I like left him in. Yeah. And I was like, you have to get up at six (laughs) o'clock. And then I was like, should we take your temperature and your pulse oximeter meter? But you just put your hand on my head. But you did not feel feverish. I was like, no, I feel fine. Because I was like, did I bring COVID? I was like worried I brought COVID in because I had taken my mom like to the Huntington Gardens. It's all outdoor stuff, but still like, yeah, you know, we picked up some takeout. I went into Mm -hmm. the, you know, and I'm like, I don't know. That variant is terrible. That new variant. But wouldn't you be feeling it? Not before? necessarily because. Uh-huh. 
The thing is, is that the a- there's like an asymptomatic drive to this. Ah, shit. I keep forgetting That's about asymptomatic. Are you kidding? If it if the asymptomatic Stop screaming at me, <laughs> the asymptomatic spread <laughs> was not such a problem, we could have tamped this shit down. Yeah, tamped it down. Could have tamped it down. Y'all got to tamp down COVID. Hey y'all, I'm hey, Mrs. Y'all. Santos. I'm the maid. <laughs> Wait, her what was her name? I'm gonna look it up. My husband oh, remember, back in Mexico. It was he's like, depending on me to stand that money. It was like. Yanni or something or the name Live of the Acropolis? <laughs> what? So do you know about Yanni? I don't wanna know. Do I Is Yanni, he was married to Linda Evans. I think they might still be married. Ooh. He's a new age uh Oh yeah, Yanni. Keyboardist. I know who he is. Yeah, and he performed live at the Acropolis. Is that the only place he performed? Because I don't... No, but that's the one that stands out in my mind. Um, of course he did Red Rocks like John Tesh did. <laughs> did you know that... So California is supposed to reopen on June 15th. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about it? I don't know. I mean, I think What it's, do you think? I think it's going to still be a long time for me before I just fully embrace like my former life and going places and stuff well that's what i'm curious about like like you know (laughs) if we fully reopen on june 15th does that mean no more zoom auditions like all of a sudden i'm like having to go into buildings i wonder about that too i wonder how much of that they're going to keep well of course they're going to bring it back they want to they don't like the they don't want to be handling all this technology Uh, here's what i'm going to say Honestly, I think Zoom auditions, not just self-tapes, but I think Zoom auditions where you're auditioning for a person live, Mm -hmm. that makes a certain sense to me Mm -hmm. because they're watching you on a screen as opposed to seeing you there in person, which always feels like kind of unnatural because that's not, it's not a play. Like this is not what it's going to be. And I I feel like, I feel like the Zoom audition could really help people it probably makes things i mean time wise it probably they'll still get as backed up as they i don't do. know. i mean i feel like i feel like i thrived in the zoom audition mm-hmm. land like i book like three commercials or whatever you know whatever i would kind of like to i haven't gotten to do one but i've only done self tapes my self tapes i have not thrived mm-hmm. not a not a peep just right. crickets. Right, right, right. Just crickets. Yeah. And there was a time when, like, sometimes I'd get do self tapes and I'd get, like, you know, calls from the director, call back, or, mm. you know, whatever. Um, not, not this year, not pandemic year. Mm-hmm. I wonder if there were just more self tapes to pick out of. Maybe. Because people had their setups at home and they were like, my client wants to send in one too. Yeah, because now everybody's self-taping. Yeah. You know. Yes. So it's different. Yes. But we'll see. I don't know. I mean, I there have been times I've gone to co- a commercial callback and the director's not there. They're in like Chicago or yeah. or somewhere. And it's yeah. like you're essentially Zooming with them at an office. Mm-hmm. You're at somebody's office Zooming with these people. Mm-hmm. Who decide? Yeah, and it's like, well, why can't I just clearly I can just do that at home now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Zoom Zoom callbacks were my my little pandemic sweet spot, but not the self tape. Oh, you've been doing well with the self tapes. You got good feedback on the one I we did yesterday from my agent. <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't. I mean, I look. I appreciated it, but that's not the same. <laughs> That's not the same as getting good feedback from the people that make the job. When my agent ever says, like, (laughs) this is a great self-tape, it makes me feel like, okay, she's seen 20 of these today, you know? So she she feels... So in other words, she feels good about sending this audition along. Yeah. No, believe me. I really appreciated it. It was a real... It really was a a pick-me-up. Um, you know, to hear from somebody else that they, that, that they thought it was of, good. Yeah. Seeing a bunch of them. Also, I gotta say, man, 
I bring the production value to my self tapes. That's true. You have a bunch of different backgrounds yeah. that you hang up in. I got wardrobe. I got it all, baby. You've got, you got it all. I've got it all. You got it all. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Anyway, this is we're just tired. We're you know, I don't know. How are people doing out there? Should we take our first caller? <laughs> we should take our first break. I I wish though we could take callers. We could set that up at some point, I'm sure. How? This isn't live. People can leave voicemails. That's a that's a popular thing that people do. I don't like that because oh, they're not part of this conversation. Pardon me. They're not part of this conversation. We could still do it. We could say we could set up like a Google number or something and say we're gonna be recording at this hour and call but how in. How do they know what we're talking about? What do you want the conversation to be? You want them to just join us? Yeah. Oh, I thought you like if they had a question or something. No, if they had a question, but it, I feel like it should be. You want to have guests now? No. Who? Wait, who has a call in show where the caller just hangs out? That's not what I'm proposing. <laughs> For example, I listen, as you know, listeners. Frequently, I listen to the Dan Abrams show. Old heads know. <laughs> on Sirius XM. Real heads, I should say. Sorry. On, po- on Channel POTUS. On Channel POTUS. Um, sometimes Dan mm-hmm. doesn't even have a guest. It's just him and the caller. Callers. Yeah. So he'll say like. Let's talk radio. They so have- he starts off and he's like. I'm going to talk about this, you know, Matt Gates thing, da 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 da. And then he's like, and I'll take your calls. And then people call in and they weigh in specifically on how the conversation is going. Right. But we don't have, <laughs> first of all, we don't have any agenda. We don't have a thing that we know we're going to talk about. We, we've never had an agenda. <laughs> and that's a problem in our lives. I don't think. Oh, you mean uh, as people, we've never had an agenda. Yes. It's true. We need to have an agenda. Well, look, the, here's the good thing. We're not shoving it down anybody's throats because <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We got to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> what is your reaction? It's like, it just feels sad without any callers. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to act like we have callers and, and go to break that way? All right. Great points. Know. Great points. Great to hear from you. A lot to think about. <laughs> we have to take a break. <laughs> we are brought to you once again this week by Old Pals. Usual Wines. Uh, usual Wines are wines for the modern drinker. Each bottle is 6.3 ounces. That sounds good, right? That's like a heavy pour. Yeah, it's like a glass and a half of wine. It's a, honey, that's exactly what it is. You know what? That's a perfect glass. Now you don't have to pour wine down the sink in a rage because you drank a glass <laughs> and a half of wine and that's all you wanted. And now you have this dumb rest of the bottle of wine to contend with. You don't have to pour the extra wine over your partner's head. You don't have to... <laughs> All of a sudden, put together a Catholic mass, so that you can, you can have, have the, you can get rid of the rest of, of the, the wine. wine. Yeah. Um, the wines are low carb and have zero grams of sugar. What? That's nice. We need and that. Usual has a red blend, a rosé, and a sparkling white wine called Brut. They also have Usual Spritz, a low alcohol, low calorie wine spritzer. What would you think the alcohol by volume percentages on that? I, I've Eight, asked you this before. Eight point three percent. Oh, you're. You're very close. 8.6%. Ooh, lower. 8.5%. That's exactly right. Oh, uh, one dollar? <laughs> that spritzer is made of sparkling wine and a guava juice. It's like White Claw for, for grown-ups. grown-ups. Children, you just got served. <laughs> Speaking of serves, each serving is just 83 calories. So go check out Usual's website at usualwines.com and use our discount code STAYFHOMKINS for $8 off your first order and try your first glass on us again. That is usualwines.com. Use the discount code STAYFHOMKINS. You get $8 off your first order. 
Happy whining. Don't be a dusty old wine drinker. Be a modern drinker. Good chime in, huh? <laughs> this episode is proudly sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, girls, take a break. Guys, it's been a hell of a year. Personally, I Wait, think- there's still a girl in here. Girls, all of you have to take a break. Personally, I feel like I've aged 12 years over the last 12 months. And if you're like me, and you probably are, you're feeling your age more than you used to, especially in the bedroom. Am I right, Paul? You're right. I feel in the bedroom like I'm 1,000 years old. <laughs> it's time to snap out of it. <laughs> Spring is here, and it's time to get sprung, y'all, with Blue Chew. What is it? Well, Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. This is great because... My problem with pills is I always want to chew them. Exactly. Blue Chew's tablets help men achieve harder, stronger erections to combat all forms of ED. That's erectile dysfunction. (laughs) You don't have to tell me twice. Blue Chew is an online prescription service. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. You can still do all those things if you want, but they have nothing to do with Blue Chew. If you still want to have awkward conversations... (laughs) The pharmacy, go ahead. But this process is simple. So sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online, okay? Blue Chew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription. Don't like swallowing pills? <laughs> no problems here. Blue Chew's Sedenafil Tadalafil tablets are chewable. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and the prepare and ship direct, so it's cheaper than a pharmacy. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we have got a special deal for our listeners. That's right. Try Blue Chew free. Free. When you use our promo code HOMEKINS at checkout, you just pay $5 for shipping. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code Home kids to receive your first month three. Thanks, Blue Chew. Thanks, Blue Chew. We love you. Thanks, Blue Chew. We're back. We're back. Get your buzz on and get your dick hard with you. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I think they really compliment each other. I do too. It's like you're gonna have a fun night either way. You got your (laughs) either way. You got your usual wines and you got, you know. Your 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 long lasting erection. Um, I just would like to. I would just like to point out that before you send me angry emails about who JetBlue might give their money to, <laughs> <laughs> um, I I would not. If someone gave money to Satan themselves, I obviously would have an issue with it. So look, you think you're going to get us, but we're going to say right now, if somebody is caught in, in, if one of those clowns in Congress is caught giving money directly to the Satan. king of the underworld, <laughs> Satan. we will Satan absolutely call that out. If JetBlue, if there's pictures of JetBlue hanging out with Satan, uh-uh, we're not flying them anymore. By the way... Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not a boycott person. It, mm, Why should I punish regular people? Well, this get, is a yeah. thing I don't like when it's a systemic issue. If you don't want corporations giving money to politicians. Yes. And I agree that that should be fucking illegal. Mm-hmm. It just should be. It just should be. Then that's what we have to tackle. Well, here's the thing. The, the, the citizen boycott is a very difficult thing to make effective because what? it requires so many people. Like when people talk about boycotting Amazon for a week or something, it's like they're not going to. Also, like, that's people, like I posted something about Chick-fil-A mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, my God, Chick-fil-A, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, but they serve Coca-Cola and I'm supporting Coca-Cola. <laughs> What? What? 
for sticking up for voting. Whatever. I'm not going to Chick-fil-A. By the way, I don't need to be eating fried food. Did yeah, y'all yeah, not yeah. hear exactly. my some, whole thing about my health? Some things are easier to boycott than others. Some things are easier to avoid. You can say, well, I don't need to eat Chick-fil-A, you know. Um, there's certain things that you don't, there's certain businesses that are very easy to not patronize. Cause you say, look, that's a, that's a luxury thing that I can do without. And so I'd rather not, if it's on my mind, I'd rather not give them money. It's, it's impossible to boycott everybody. Let me finish. It's impossible to boycott everybody who's doing shitty things in the corporate world because that's a shitty world. But what you have to do, things like people putting pressure on a network, to say, don't do business with these people anymore because they're bad. That's, uh, that's, that's a way more effective thing because those people, they don't want to be, they don't want to lose any money. Well, I think it's a, it's like, it's like, yeah, you have to hit him where it hurts. Yeah. So those people, so like networks are happier to drop somebody than to lose, um, you know, to, to, they don't want to lose their own, uh, patrons, their own patronage, whatever, their own customers. So they're happy to say, Hey, fuck you corporation. You can't, we're not going to take your advertising. Here's the thing. I don't have a problem with anybody doing their own stuff. Like obviously, but so many times I'll casually say, Oh, da da da." you know, whatever Amazon and they're like, and then people are like, you need to stop everything with Amazon. And I'm like, really? That's going to make the difference. Yeah. And they're like, well, if if 8 million people did it on the same day and I'm like, okay, fine. It's one thing on one day or whatever. But like, do you know how much stuff Amazon owns? Do you have any fucking idea? When people say they want to boycott Mm Coca-Cola, do they even know? The, the drinks that Coca-Cola owns. Yeah. Because guess what? Every drink that's come up against Coca-Cola, they have <laughs> purchased. Yeah. You know? And then if I want to support Coke because they said fuck you to Georgia voting suppression, I can't buy it at the Chick-fil-A. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, got to buy the Coke somewhere else. Yeah. You know? it, what it, I'm just saying is too much. I can't. Yeah. It's, it's very, it's, it's a really, it's, it's messy. It's way messier than people make it out to be when they say you should stop doing this one thing. And it's like, I understand, I understand the, I understand where you're coming from because I, I get like, once it's in your mind, it makes it very hard to not think about it Mm -hmm. every time you're, you're giving money to this, this whatever huge corporation it is. It's very hard, but some things are easier to avoid than others, you know? And I had, you know, I had a friend, uh, years ago, I, we had a conversation about Chick-fil-A and he said, well, I work for a company that's owned by Fox. You know, I work on a, on a TV show that's Cuckoo. owned, hi Cuckoo, that's owned by, you know, the, the Fox corporation. Sure, so the Murdoch's. isn't that, am I not taking bad money? And it's like, well, it's, it's, it's different if you work in a specialized field, there are only so many jobs that are open and this is just the job that you manage to get. There's a difference between that and saying, I can very easily not eat a Chick-fil-A sandwich, you know? Well, I, I, I agree with that on a certain level, but I also, um, and I'm thinking of big corporations like mm-hmm. Coke or whatever, like, you know, sometimes some, like a business will come in and save a town or sometimes a business will, and, and they're horrible. They're horrible. Yeah. But it's like, it's, it's not black and white. It's like nuanced. It's, it is slightly nuanced. I mean, it is like we are, we are acknowledging that these places are bad, but life being what it is now, it does make it more difficult to do without some things. There are ways like with Amazon, there are definitely ways you can manage your Amazon usage. It's like, there are, I, I was, we may have talked about this here before, but I was posting about, um, you know, a, a, a unhoused organization that was using Amazon wish list to buy stuff. Yeah. They were buying tents and blankets and, uh, uh, hand sanitizer, all this stuff. Yeah. They would put out these big wish lists. Yeah. And so I would share it online and then people were like, well, it's Amazon. Isn't there a way to do it without Amazon? I'm like, well, sure. Yeah. Go look it up. Well, but here's the thing. <laughs> 
if they are using, if these groups are using Amazon, it's because they have, and, and sure enough, this is what uh, somebody from the group I was posting, I uh, was posting about eventually said is like, we've looked into it. We've looked into all, we tried like hell to avoid using Amazon, but the way that their thing is set up, it makes it so much easier to buy stuff in bulk quickly and get it to these people to, who need yeah, it. Yeah, than to go to 80 different little businesses and try to get that stuff and get it fast, you know. Listen, here's the thing. I I love Amazon. I have a Kindle. Like I was like one of the first Kindle readers, but I definitely get that there's like an evil like I the fact that they're not letting their workers unionize in Alabama is messed up. That's there is never any up. good reason. Never any good like reason. I'm pro union. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. I'm you know like Me too. like obviously something is wrong, or they wouldn't be organizing in the first fucking place. Yes, and exactly. I get it. Like there are un- like unions can also be bad too. Like there's a lot of corruption, and I don't know Jimmy Hoffa or whatever, <laughs> but like. It doesn't, it's not always like that. Like sometimes there are real safety issues that need to be addressed. And the only way to do that is to collectively bargain. There, there can be people that work for unions that are corrupt, but the union, the idea of the union itself and protecting its workers is not bad. It, it gets, it gets, uh, you know, there are degrees, of course, like police unions are fucking wild, um, that's not great. Like they are, they are, I mean, they're doing their job, they're a union, they're protecting their employees, but it's people that have murdered people. <laughs> um, but I, yeah, any company that's like, we, we, we don't think you need to have a union. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's not good. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't like a lot of it. I don't like a lot of it, but like, I don't know. We live in this modern world. I'm conflicted about it. You know? Yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to live my life and be a good fucking person. I don't yeah. need people to pile on me because I'm liking that JetBlue has a direct flight now to my hometown. We're all, we're all, we're doing the best we can, everybody. We're like, doing it'll, the best we it'll can. be like the kind of thing where you're like, you're literally like on the flight and then all of a sudden you'll see like, JetBlue's evil. You're not supposed to do it or whatever. <laughs> and it's like, I've already like booked my... Fly, I've already put, stuck my mom on a JetBlue flight yeah. home. I'm not going to rebook her flight, on, and I'm not going to make her take a longer... Ugh. No. Here's what it comes down to. It's on a fixed the, income. The uh, list, the list of companies shit. that are as big as these corporations that are not absolutely... That are not engaged in some sort of active evil <laughs> is very small. Another thing is, like, so there's a certain privilege that comes along with boycotts, too. Where it's like, I'm going to boycott this or that. And I'm like, well, that's great that you can do that in your life. Yeah. Like, the people you know, that, not everyone can do that. A lot of people you that the talk like... Pharmaceutical companies are fuck the fucking robber barons. Yeah. And it's like, well, I'm not going to go without insulin or EpiPen just because yeah. you don't like the fucking Sacklers or whoever the fuck they are. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot of people that like to... It's a to, certain form of privilege and it's not... It shouldn't be on us like the little guy. Yeah. To to be like, we're I'm going to change this. It's like narcissistic to think that. Yeah, Whatever. and there's also a lot of people that <laughs> are... So, like, yeah, I guess got in a mood in the break. <laughs> what happened. It's easy. It, sometimes it's easy for people to say, you shouldn't use that service when it's like a service they wouldn't use. They don't need to use it, you know. But, like, airlines are... That's a tricky thing. It's like, yeah, I guess I could take the train. <laughs> also, thank God Co- <laughs> Coca-Cola is standing up for good because I'll never fucking drink Pepsi. There's no fucking way. I made a tweet about that, and I was surprised to find out how many Pepsi lovers there are. I out liked there. your tweet about it. It was funny. I liked your tweet about it because you know what? Funny because it's true. Funny because it's, it's true. It's the best comedy. It's funny because it's, it's true. Funny cause it's true. Anyway, I just I had to like when on the break I was like, oh, people are gonna get on me. They're like, well, you well, actually, so- actually, you don't know what JetBlue did. And and, but now you're now you're falling into this trap of. You're you're assuming that people are going to argue with you. You're you're arguing. Yeah. You're pre-arguing with people that you think are going to argue. I'm with preemptively. You. I'm I'm just. I'm ba- I'm basically like. Psh, 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 psh. Quiet. Before psh, they even psh, say anything. Psh, 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 I'm saying, psh, 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 baby, live your life. Live I know you life. like to say that, but like, I do. I am on the receiving end a little more. I think than you are. <laughs> Paul just gave me a very skeptical sure. look. Sure. 
Well, I know because you have your million followers, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, anyway. Whatever. Here's the, here's the real thing that I want to talk about. Yeah. Let's get into it. Finally. Enough the, pussyfooting around. I want to talk about the QAnon <laughs> documentary. <laughs> docuseries. What a ride that was. It was a ride. What did you think of it? I thought it was very well done. Uh, I think that, um, you know, I, I do admire anyone who who wades into that mm-hmm. pool of, of, you know, just right. real mental illness and anger and rage and white supremacy. It's really, um, like it's terrifying. Brave. brave. Yeah, I, I mean, think like it Col- is. Colin, the the documentarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think it's brave. I think it's also, um, you know, it's you're really uh, you're 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 putting yourself into not I, and brave not not just in the sense of like who knows what these people are going to do, but you're you're immersing yourself in a world of just real sickness. You know, and that's got to take its toll on you emotionally. I think sometimes, like, sometimes I think, like, oh, it would be interesting to learn more about this cult or that cult or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then every now and then I'll be like, what if I start, like, seeing their point? Mm -hmm. You know? Like, what if I'm like, oh, okay. You know, there was a... You know, alien named Zenu who, whatever. Always, you know what I mean? Like, there's like always you kind a, of could get brainwashed. Yeah, but there's always turning points with those things. And I think that it, first of all, depends on where you are in your life right. and what you are looking for. And I think that, you know, the odds of, the odds of us, first of all, the odds of us both getting sucked into a cult are probably greater than just one of us. Because if we are both believing the same thing, we don't then have somebody to check and say, hey, this doesn't seem right. If we're both like, this guy makes a lot of sense. Don't you think so? We Mm -hmm. agree. Mm -hmm. But if it was just you. Mm -hmm. And there was a couple in that QAnon documentary where they were like, there were a few couples. There were a few couples. There were a few couples where it was like. They were all in. There were couples in the vow, you know, like there's, there's, it happens, you know, where where both people are like. But I think that if you or if I solo started saying, hey, this this way, this sort of way of thinking really makes sense to me and there's a lot uh, that, that's good in it, um, I think that the other person could check that and say, you know, this is maybe... It's funny that you say this because I talk about this a lot with my therapist because mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> like I could be indoctrinated in a cult like i really Why do you just, think that though I just because everything i've ever seen on cult topics mm-hmm. like the one thing that they tell you the experts tell you is not to judge the people that have been indoctrinated because it can happen to anyone and they're intelligent people and it's yes. not and, and that we need to express compassion for this thing that happened to them. Mm-hmm. So like in my mind. Which I agree with. I, I agree with it, obviously. I mean, like, you know, we we should show compassion to everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, except for Matt Gaetz. Um, <laughs> but, my, but my point is this, <laughs> is that. Um, you say that one just in time. <laughs> that is like, whenever I hear that narrative, so. so it makes me not understand brainwashing because the way it the way it is presented that way that any it could happen to anyone mm-hmm. it makes it sound like you could be minding your own fucking business mm-hmm. on the bus reading your book yeah and some charismatic leader could sit down next to you and the next thing you know you're like seduced right by this thing right but so so it's made me like kind of paranoid in a way of like I just need to not meet any cult leaders. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be aware of little shrimpy guys uh, like, that everyone says, oh, he's just like, he likes to play volleyball. Speak. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think that it, I think Doesn't it, could, it sound like that. I, th- I think it could happen to anyone 
if they're at a certain point in their life. I don't think that it just like you could be perfectly content minding your own business and then all of a sudden you're in a cult. You know what I mean? But they make it kind of sound like that. They they do, but but here's why. Because any of us could find ourselves in a bad situation, okay, a bad place me, in our lives. So let me ask you this. So you're saying... Because don't forget they're con men. Yeah, they are. So they're preying on a certain type of person. They're preying, not, I'm that not type a, of person. Not a certain type of person. They're Well, I mean certain type of person in, in terms of where that person is in their lives. Okay. So they're looking at somebody who is... They're looking for some kind of answer. They're unhappy... And they're looking for something that's going to they're look people are looking for a shortcut. We're always looking for shortcuts. And so it's somebody that wants, whether whether they acknowledge it's a shortcut or not, they want like a magic pill. They want like a thing that's like, oh, I know how to do it. But are you, you unhappy? I know how to make you happy. It's like this. You're saying that I think this is what you're saying. The combination of the con man coming into contact with the mark. Yes. At at, at the marks certain low point in life where they're searching for answers is the key, yes. not a con man coming into contact with just anybody. No, because the con man will come into contact with people that they can't con and they'll know it and they'll move on. But my, they'll say, this person is not going to, I can't get this person with what I'm selling. So I'm going to move on to somebody else. But you're saying that it's because anyone can be at a low point in their life. So my question is this, how do you know when you're in like, Sometimes I feel kind of blue, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm out at a Gelson's wine bar. And if Keith Raniere or whatever sat next to <laughs> next, I, I, Keith Raniere could not have gotten me. I think, like, I don't think so. Maybe a Dave Koresh. Maybe I, a Dave Koresh. I think it depends also <laughs> on what, at what, you know, if you're at a point in your life where you say, you know, I've tried. I've tried therapy, I've tried this, that, and I'm still unhappy. And you have to be at a point where you're saying, I guess this is just my life, is that I'm just unhappy. And there's nothing I can do about it, you know? That's, that's what these people are looking for. And they're looking, they're looking for vulnerable people at vulnerable moments. Mm-hmm. It makes sense to me that Scientology has such a presence here in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Because it's like people are coming here... To uh, chase after a dream and a lot of people, they they get here and they're lost and they Mm -hmm. don't know and they don't know what to do, where to turn. And Scientology promises them like a family. They promise them a community and they say that they can... I think the community side of it is kind of the sickest part in a way. Yeah. Because like the QAnon thing, these people, like from what I understand, and, and really the documentary was less about the members as much as the creators. Yes, exactly. But um, but uh, the QAnon people, from what I could understand from things I've read and heard on interviews, is they really felt a part of a community. And so the con now are using these other marks as instruments of their con. And I think that's so egregious, mm-hmm. you know, because... A community can exist without someone preying on their brains. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we all form our own communities all the time, yeah. you know? But the the QAnon thing, what's so amazing to me about it is this, and it's and it's talked about in uh, on that uh, the podcast, Fever Dreams. I think they touched on it in the documentary where they talk about it a little bit more because they talked to Fred from... Um, from the documentary on the latest episode. He was such an interesting figure to yeah. me. Um, but the the idea that this person got on a message board and said, I'm very high up in the government and I know these things. And a bunch of people chose to believe him because there were other people that that have done this. It's a common thing mm-hmm. where somebody says, I'm actually an insider and whatever. And in the beginning, QAnon was uh, laughed at. You know, like mm-hmm. nobody was like, sure, whatever. But they believe, but they more credence was given to these other people like FBI Anon. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that people were like, no, this guy's real and QAnon is a joke. And then somehow, just over time, it shifted to where QAnon became the, the real to these people. Like, oh, this guy absolutely is who he says, <laughs> who he says he is. Like, 
It was just well, a- because wasn't he doing like from what I could understand of how people became sort of indoctrinated mm-hmm. was that he would say all these crazy things and yeah. then like three of them would end up like kind of being true or something. They could be interpreted as true. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so all of a sudden people were like, oh, this guy is on the inside. Like yeah, he's yeah, there yeah. with Trump. Like he's telling him what to say and what yes. to do and and it's coming true and everything. So they thought this person really was inside. Yeah. Inside. Trump Trump really accelerated the process, but it did exist pre-Trump, but it didn't really catch fire until I think, if I recall correctly, it was during the 2016 campaign. And that's when it was Pizzagate and, you know, Hillary Clinton's drinking blood and all, <laughs> all this shit. Then, like, the the things that, like, you know, uh, Hillary's been arrested and uh, there's a, uh, you know, body double out there who's pretending to be Hillary. Like, it... It defies, it defies, all of it defies logic. I mean, I could have been indoctrinated because I did think there was a Melania body double. <laughs> like if there was a cult that was like, there's a Melania body, body double, mm-hmm. I would have believed it because but, I looked at that picture of her nose and it did not look like her nose. Yeah. Here's why it was believable because the, the that was, you know, a group of people that were not just proven liars, yes. but also incompetent. Yes. So it did seem believable that they would get somebody. It it didn't seem completely unbelievable, let's say, that they would get somebody who looked enough like Melania I to stand there in a photo. I did not think those pictures looked like Melania. Right. Like, I, I, I was, get it. I know. Maybe I get they it. were doctored or something. Who fucking knows? There's that too. But it did, the reason that seemed believable to a person who is otherwise reasonable is that, oh yeah, we're dealing with idiots and this is a thing that an idiot would do yeah you know what i mean yeah <laughs> well what the whole thing about the q documentary was so interesting to me were the were the father-son figures or whatever Ugh. who clearly had no ideology like mm-hmm. they were just like their ideology was themselves, was yes. themselves or yeah, whatever. Yeah. and Or they're nihilists, you know. They're like, yes. life is a game and yes. we're going to do this and it's amusing to us, you know. And and I, I find that that so fucked up because it would be one thing if there was like some true believer behind it that's like, yeah. you know, like I had to lie because I had to get the pedophiles off the, <laughs> you know, the Hollywood exactly. circuit or whatever. Exactly. Like that, like I almost would be like, oh... Okay, this person is delusional and you know they're kind of like high on their own thing or whatever. Mm. But the fact that they literally had like their only belief was like porn <laughs> right. was was kind of like wow, are you kidding me? Yeah. Really? I, I would recommend if you're interested in this, I would recommend the latest episode of uh, Fever Dreams, which I think came out just uh, yeah, today gonna, or yesterday. I was going to ask you because I, I, I know you just referenced that podcast Fever Dreams. So, yeah. so they're interviewing the guy Fred. Yeah. And um, but this is after the documentary. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. okay. they talk about the documentary and and he and he ended up okay. The Fred Fred he had to move back in with his mom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He. I mean, he escaped. You know, jail where he would probably have died. I just. I felt. Um, I felt for him because even though he kind of started as a weird teen dweeb in Gamergate, he mm-hmm. sort of seemed to have evolved and matured a little bit. Yeah. And have a conscience about the yeah. games that were going on, on online where and then he had that epiphany where he was like online is real life, life real life is mm-hmm. online. Like it, he clearly had self reflection on it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it was by his own admission that he didn't want to be associated with it, and he he had, I'm sure, guilt about that and and pride about that. Like he didn't want to be associated with this thing that he created that had been turned into uh, something that you could argue inevitably that was what it was going to turn into. Violence. Yeah. It incited violence. Incited violence for sure. It did yeah. I mean, that was the turning point for him. Yeah. But um. But yeah, if you if you liked that doc, uh, the last. This week's episode and the, and the last episode both uh, talk about the doc and and get into it a little. They they talk about Colin. They talk with Colin and uh, and with. Fred. We keep calling him Colin like he's our friend, but they just kept calling him Colin in the. They're one name performers now. Yeah, because they're like oh, Colin and Fred, and then yeah. 
Well, Ray or Roy or Ron. Ron and Jim. <sighs> a real dad and lad project, QAnon. Also, uh, so like my whole thing about also that was interesting about the QAnon um, uh, thing was mm. um, there was like a minute where like obviously Ron, his dad is a psychopath. It seems I can't diagnose. I'm not <laughs> yeah. a doctor. Um, if anyone seems like a psychopath, it f- seems like, you know, the dad was. Yeah. And um. And and then Ron, the kid, clearly had been like he had this sort of narcissistic wound or whatever from the dad and um, ended up kind of like, I don't know, wanting his approval or whatever. So he created a violent inci- violence <laughs> inciting uh, message trash board. But uh, one of the things was like there was a moment where Colin asked the dad if he was like, oh, are you proud of your son? And the guy like s- hesitate. He's like, silence. Sil- oh, yeah, yeah, I am proud of him. And I'm like, he's like so not capable of anytime a parent has to think about it and and, <laughs> and then and then there was the time yeah, a time when, when he was like oh you think i'm QAnon, the son mm-hmm. and he kind of smiled i read about this online that um that's called like dupes delight it's like a con man mm-hmm. thing yeah like when they know that like they're yeah. like getting one up you that's, can, that's what it's you all can about see the micro expressions yeah, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. catch like the micro expressions. absolutely that's what they live for yeah, and I thought I thought it was like it was like so sad. Like they're both like seemingly sociopathic people, mm-hmm. you know. That I don't know. This is like very strange. Like that this was some important thing for them. Like yeah. why? Yeah. Like what? It what was the what was the dopamine? Like just like people like doing all this violent shit and well, then being like it, knowing that they did it. I yeah, I mean it's the power certainly. It's that look at look at, if you if you really don't value life and you think life is just a stupid thing and coincidentally you're wealthy. Um, so wealthy, but he acted like he lost money on on it. He acted like wealthy he was, people lose money all the time and remain wealthy. Also, they had all those porn. Um, yeah. Domain names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that they could just sell off like a hundred of them. Yes. I I <laughs> I think that for, you know, well, uh, the, uh, there's a certain kind of nihilism that only wealthy people can have, people that don't have to worry about life, um, that they can afford literally in every way, afford to just enjoy stirring up shit and watching what happens um, because they don't, they're not engaged with the material, uh, you know, hard scrabble existence that everyone else is. If people are, if people are like psychopaths mm-hmm. and they need this charge in order to feel stimulated mm-hmm. and, and the charge that they get in order to feel stimulated is causing human suffering Mm -hmm. in some form or some kind of mayhem or chaos or whatever, wouldn't we be better off as a society if we found a way to stimulate, like, drug-free, you know, like a charge for for psychopaths so they'd stay out of people's lives? Like some kind of, like, I don't know, electrode you know, shock something where they could go in to the clinic and just get like a little charge of... Like along the lines of a chemical castration where it's like, we know you can't help yourself. We're going to do this. And then you don't have to... So that will take care of the problem. And and then you don't have to be fucking annoying (laughs) society or you don't have to be like destroying people's lives or, you know, like, wouldn't we be better treating that instead of like the low level depression that the pharmaceutical companies make gazillions off of Mm -hmm. like society would be so much better off if we were just like be able to like round up these, you know, menaces. I guess that's the next thing. Like after the vaccine (laughs) work on that psychopath pill. 
The vaccine, like we Come got on, the, Dolly Parton. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly. We got the va- so like I was thinking about how people think it's like 5G or whatever. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, so why would there be side effects? Like if they wanted everyone to get the five G, like why wouldn't they have designed well, it? It's also like and this has been said a million times before. We all have phones. Like we're 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 so easily tracked all the time. All the time. Wait, so wait, the the wait, so the they thought that the vaccine had five G to some track people, people? Yeah, some people thought there was like <laughs> to track people. There was like a, a chip in the vaccine that would in, it would be injected into your body. So you can never so, so that you're, Bill Gates or the government or whoever would know so, where you are. So at that all Bill times. Gates opens his fine friends and he's like, <laughs> and it's like Cerebro from X Men, where he just sees this vast constellation of human and he's souls. Like, oh, I wonder where so and so is. <laughs> he didn't add me to his five friends, but I injected that chip. Yeah. So I'm gonna. Oh, he's at the Costco. Then what? What's amazing? So he knows is he's like, at the Costco. So then what? What's amazing so is goes, they they say that this is the, the reasoning always is the government's trying to track you. They're trying to you know they get your DNA, whatever, all this shit. Uh, this is to prevent you from rising up against the government. Everything is to prevent us from rising up against the government. <laughs> we're already prevented from that because we're at each other's throats. Well, th- but that's, people say that too. That's why we're so that divided. Is, I believe that. The government wants us so divided. Yeah, they do. Um, I, don't, I, I don't think the government gives a shit. I mean, they want us divided they want because... They money. They want us divided because they want to stay in power. Each side wants to stay in power. Um, and so, of course, that's good for them. Um, but... Look what happened on January 6th. Like those people, even with the government being underprepared. Mm-hmm. And they were. For an uprising. And they were. It still ended with the government doing just fine. You know what I mean? I, I January 6th. They don't need to be tracking us, chipping us, all that shit. Like, January 6th was such an embarrassing and horrifying and terrible day for it our country. It was absurd. Do you know how bad it makes us look to the world? China sees that and they're like, we could knock them over like a fucking feather. <laughs> yeah, which they probably could. Anyway, we got to wrap might. this up. And they might, China. But we're not, look, we're not trying to stoke more anti-Asian <laughs> prejudice. That's not anti-Asian. That's superpower. I, kn- I know, but it gets into, but but there was so much superpower talk that it filtered down into dumb people uh, like going to Chinatown and saying, you know, you're, you know. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. I do not condone any hate toward anybody. Period. Let's get that on the record. We do not condone hate crimes. Unless you're Matt, Matt Kate. Kate. No, we By can't say way, that. I we like, can get in trouble. <laughs> no. I follow this guy on Twitter named Matt Getz. Uh-huh. Who's like a media watchdog person. Do mm-hmm. you know about this? So I no. follow this guy, Matt Gets. Mm-hmm. Is it spelled the same way? No, it's like one letter different. G E T Z. No, it might be O E. I can't. Oh, okay, it, okay. But I can't remember. Mm-hmm. But and he's like blue check and seven. He's like a. He's like not. Fucking blue checks. He's like neutral. He's like media watchdog person. Mm. But it. He's a very kind of a funny follow, and and I feel bad saying this because it. I know his life is hell, because people think. That he's Matt Gates, yeah, the pedophile congressman, yeah. And <laughs> the day that the Matt Gates story broke mm-hmm. in my Twitter feed, his tweet was just, "Oh fuck!" <laughs> <laughs> like that was it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and like that people like go like pile on and they're like oh. I can't wait to see what happens now. and then he get and then he'll like post like screenshots like this like text from his dad and stuff uh-huh. and his dad will be like hey did you see the news today because like everybody like knows he's like I I think his even Twitter bio is like not that one I'm or, sure you know, it is yes and um and it is literally like become weirdly entertaining because. Yeah. He's stuck in this thing or whatever. I mean, in a way, it's got to be nice to get hate from people when you know they're thinking you're someone else. <laughs> it's got to be kind of funny. 
that it's like, oh, I know this isn't directed at me. This is great. I just like I my favorite satirist that came out of the pandemic was Blair Erskine. She's so funny. I I'm like in love with her. She's so funny because also like maybe she's like my little sister in another <laughs> alter ego or mm-hmm. something, and um, her satire is so spot on mm-hmm. that even n- still like to this day people think. Like blue check Twitter thinks she's real. Oh yeah, she's constantly getting people still telling her still you don't know what you're talking about for like a year, yeah. a year. Yeah, she's been doing these videos, mm-hmm. like, and people are still like, she did one where she was like a bride, and she was like, Trump just crashed my wedding at Mar a Lago. Uh, yes, yes. You know, and people are like, who's this dumb bitch? <laughs> you know, yeah. and it's like she's li- saying the most insane. Thing. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. It's so funny to me. All right, what's your recommendation beside the fair fight? Good fight. Would you recommend how to have a fight? Fever dreams? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what's how to have a fight? <laughs> it's our new podcast. <laughs> it's our post pandemic. <laughs> it's our post pandemic. Good fight, fair fight. How to have a fight? It's our post pandemic podcast. Um, I want to recommend, I'm just going to do personal plugs. Um, I have a show, I have two shows coming up online. Um, one with, uh, it's a, it's a big, um, super group <laughs> mashup. It's uh super ego that I'm a member of. Um, and that's an improv group, uh, me, Matt Gorley, Mark McConville and Jeremy Carter. And we are doing a show with wild horses, another quartet, which is Lauren Lapkus, Stephanie Allen, Mary Holland, and Aaron Whitehead. We're going to do a, just an old fashioned improv show together online. That is April 19th, 5 PM Pacific. Um, and we were going to do a show a year ago live at dynasty typewriter, Um, and it was right at the beginning of when people were saying like, are we doing things anymore or what should we do? Like there was a lot of back and forth, a lot of emails back and forth. Like, should we still do this? Are we online or whatever? And then, and then all like one day it became very clear, like, yeah, we're not doing shows. Um, so it's, I, and I've thought about doing that show every day since. That sucked. Yeah, it sucked. And so we're finally doing one online together, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, April 19th, April 19th, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Pacific. It's called Super Horses Wild Ego. Uh, tickets are on sale now, but that's going to be a really fun show. And I know at that paulftompkins.com. At paulftompkins.com. Okay. Um, at dynastytypewriter.com. And if you're not, if you haven't seen, uh, any of the shows that I've done online, I know that some people are, have trepidation about it because they think like, Oh, it's just cause just going to be like a zoom call where people are hanging out and stuff. And it's like, it's no, we're doing it. We're putting on a show. Mm-hmm. It's a real show. So it's, it's not, it's not just some like casual hangout. Like there's, right. you're paying for something, a-, a real thing. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait. And, uh, there's some great disturbing artwork that is out now promoting the show. Um, and then April 24th, which is our 11th anniversary, uh, I am going to step away for uh, an hour or two to do a show with the Thrilling Adventure Hour. What? <laughs> We're so excited to do that. <laughs> you had like a big smile on your face before you said it. <laughs> We're doing... <laughs> A thrilling adventure hour <laughs> show uh, with some all new material, and that's going to be uh, Saturday, uh, April twenty fourth at five p.m. Pacific. Um, tickets are on sale now. You can go to paulftompkins dot com slash live. Wow, those are some good recommendations. Yeah. Okay, I have two recommendations. One's in the form of a binge watch, mm-hmm. and one's in the form of a old fashioned book. So um, I binged The Serpent on Netflix, and I really enjoyed it. It's the true story of this international serial killer um, that was fucking terrifying. It was, like, chilling. And uh, and it was, like, inspired by true events that I'd never heard of. Mm-hmm. Me neither. Any of it. 
I'd never heard of any of it. And the actors were like awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, So I really enjoyed that Netflix binge. Um, My very good friend is a best-selling novelist. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Cynthia Dupree Sweeney. Her first book, The Nest, was on the New York Times whatever list stuff. Highly recommend. Mm. Her brand new novel just came out. It's called Good Company. I just started it. It's so good. First of all, it deals with characters who are actors. So I'm already like loving it. She didn't fucking put us in there, did she? (laughs) Well, I did sort of like help out a little bit here and there. Yeah, like during the years that she was writing it, like some stuff. Like I'd she's send gonna her. tear us apart in some Romana clef. I don't want to like <laughs> give it away, but apparently I'm in the acknowledgement. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, congrats. Well, I was in the nest too, and so were you. But like, that's a whole different story. But I'm just this saying- your first. This is your first solo book acknowledgements. Maybe. All I know is like so many people told me I was in the acknowledgments. I didn't get to discover myself oh in my the acknowledgments. That's great. Which is fine. That's I like that. That's I don't sweet. really care. But it's like because I love Cynthia so much and she's such a talented writer. So please read Good Company if you want to like because remember I'm having trouble finishing books. Yes. So now I'm like excited because I finally finished a book. Yeah. Before this one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds so sad. Do you know my big move? At a at a play, mm-hmm. if it's if it's produced by if it's put on by people that I know, mm-hmm. right? Okay. I will look at the program and say, "Oh, I'm not in the special thanks," and then I'll rip the program in half. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Right before the play starts, it's a classic bit. I like that. Yeah, it's a good one. I like that a lot. <laughs> I'm rereading Huckleberry Finn. I, 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 what happened? I don't know. It was something I realized I, I hadn't read it since I was a kid and I wanted to read it again. And I'm really <laughs> enjoying it. Um, you know, I read sort of last year, I read sort of like a, like a modern, like not a modern, like a modern family novel. <laughs> There's a series of modern family novels. <laughs> no, I read this book that was like a Huckleberry. It was like a, it was like a, a picaresque. I don't know what that means. It's a literary term. <laughs> that being... means a book like Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> it does? <laughs> kind of. I don't believe yeah. that. No. Man, I swear to God. I swear to God. I think it's like an, an adventure kind of, you know, thing. Like, well, a, a I ground, read, like a grounded adventure. I read one last year and I kind of thought that you would like it. Mm-hmm. This Tender Land or something like that. This I tender... remember you mentioning this. Yeah. And it was like these kids that went to like one of those Indian schools. I don't think you're supposed to call them that anymore. Native, but like, you know what I'm talking about? Those yeah. where they like abused them, try to like, they try to like, you know, whiten up natives right. and all. It, it was like horrible. And then they go down the Mississippi. Anyway, it was like really good. And I think you would like that book, to be honest. It sounds like it's right up my alley. It actually, I think you would like. You would, you should, after Huckleberry Finn, I think that you should read, I think it's called This Tender Land. I'm probably going to read Cynthia's book next, mm. and then I'll read that. Mm. I think that will, make, that will make more sense. After Cynthia's book, I'm reading Caroline Kepner's new book, the third in the trilogy, You Love Me. You, oh, I've yeah, talked about it before. Yeah. I'm very excited because it just came out. But those two books came out on the same day, and I needed to read Cynthia's first and then understood, Caroline's next. Understood, understood. No one blames you. No one. Thank does God I you. know people who write books because then I'll fucking read a book. <laughs> uh, that's not true. You read all the time. Not anymore. No. Yes, you do. You still do. No. We got a little look under no. under the pandemic. We got a little lax with our screen time, but we no. still we still read. All under right. the pandemic, more like the last four years. No, that's life. not that's not true, my dearest darling. All right, we got to wrap it up. Y'all. Thank you for listening. We are good uh, job. We're on <laughs> good, good job getting through this. Good job, y'all. We love you so much. We're on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Stay of Homekins, Stay of Homekins at gmail.com. If you want to email us, be nice to Janie. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, we really do appreciate you listening. We love you so much. 
Um, we love y'all. Please get vaxxed. I think people yeah. are. People have been sending pictures. It's Check opening our, up so many places. We have that new merch. We have that sweatshirt and t-shirt. Kinshipgoods.com. At kinshipgoods.com. Yeah. People are fucking loving that shit. Yeah. But thank you so much. We'll be back stay, next week. And until then, stay, stay safe, <laughs> stay sane, and stay home. Home if you can, I guess. We're getting near the end. Stay home. Stay <laughs>